Tia from Chickpreneur.com. I wanted to do a quick video to show you one of my favorite tools for creating these photo collage type images like the one here for this fashion emergency post. Now I'm a big Photoshop person. I have used Photoshop for years and I still use it regularly, but I have found something much easier and faster and that is Keynote for Mac. Of course Keynote is Mac's version of PowerPoint. And this method I'm showing you could also be used with PowerPoint with similar results, but I'm going to focus on Keynote in this tutorial. So the first thing I do is open the Keynote software and you are brought to the theme chooser. I select this white default template and then I just click to select and hit the delete key to delete each of the boxes to create a blank slide. Now what I like to do is make this background or work area the width of my blog post and that way I know it's going to fit and it's easy to visualize how it's going to look on the page. So the way to do this is come up here and click to open the inspector and once the inspector comes up you'll see the icon to the left called the document inspector. Down here you'll see slide size and just click custom slide size. And here is where you can enter the dimensions for your slide. Now my blog post is 678 pixels wide and for height I like to put something longer than I need just so I have a little bit of extra workspace and I usually don't know what height the image will end up so I know I'm going to have to crop it anyway. Then just click OK and your workspace is ready. Now you want to open up the folder where you have the images that you want to use for your collage. and then just start dragging them in. Now don't worry about resizing anything ahead of time. This is how cool this is. We're going to edit everything right in here. Okay, to resize an image, select the image. You know it's selected when it's surrounded by these little squares and go to the corner, hold down the mouse and you can drag these corner handles. You don't even have to hit shift key to maintain dimensions. It just does it automatically. Now you're just going to drag the photos and position them and resize them how you want. And this is what I love about Keynote. You're not working in layers like with Photoshop or some of the other programs and everything is drag and drop and happens right here. Now, if your photos are not all transparent and you're working with isolated images, they are bound to have the white background. This can create a problem if you want to position images next to each other. To fix this, you'll want to select the photo whose background you want to remove and then click this red tool up here that's called Instant Alpha. Your cursor will then turn into this little crosshair and once you have the crosshair, you click and hold the mouse down and drag around the image. Then hit Enter and the background's been removed. Now, sometimes you may have trouble when the tool picks up some of the image or removes some of the edges. You may need to just work with it a bit and do the best you can. Now, if something gets screwed up, you always have the ability to undo it. To do this, come up to edit and then hit undo and it will undo the last action you performed. You can keep hitting the undo until you get back to where you want it to be. Another cool feature is if you do want to line something up, you can see that these guides pop up automatically and they show you when you're centered with another image or if you can see here, it shows the spacing dimensions. Another way to line up images is to select the photos you want to align with each other using the command key and right click and that will open up a menu to where you can align the objects. Now this also works if you want to control the depth positioning of a photo and put one of the photos in front of the other. Like here, I can just right click and bring the photo to the front. Now if you wanted to rotate a photo, maybe to make it fit better in your collage, then select the photo. And if you hover your mouse over the square border guide, you'll see a horizontal arrow. Now hold down the command key, which is next to the space bar, and this arrow turns into a little U shape and then you can adjust it however with your mouse. Okay, let's say we have everything lined up the way we want it and now we want to add numbers or text. To do this, just come up here and click where it says text box and a text box appears on the slide. Now this is drag and drop just like everything else. Now you can type numbers or text. Inside this text box functions just like any other word processing type of program where you can change the font or bold or italicize and you can do it right up here on the toolbar. 
Now, if I'm creating numbers or text that I'm going to use more than once, a shortcut is instead of recreating each time, once I have it formatted the way I want, I just right click and hit duplicate. And then I can just drag it and then change it. And I do it as many times as needed. Okay, let's say you have the full image exactly the way you want it. Now we'll want to export this slide as an image file. To do this, come up here to Share and scroll down to Images and Select. Then you'll select the slide you want to export. Now if you only have one, you can just keep it on All. Now one downside to building this in Kino is the exported image is going to be huge. So if you're going to post this on the web, you're most likely going to want to reduce the file size. Otherwise your page will load slowly, which is bad. I would suggest starting with JPEG around 75 to 80% and see how that works. If it's too grainy or the text is blurry in the end result, just come back and either up the resolution or try PNG before reducing the file size to see if that helps. Then just click Next and name your file and hit Export. Now, this is when I usually open this image in Photoshop and I'll crop the height and I'll also optimize it using an option in Photoshop called Save for Web and Devices. But you can use any photo editing software to do this. There are also free websites out there that are designed to optimize file sizes, so I'll be sure to leave a few in the options in the description. One last tip, if you think you're going to create photos this way for your blog, go ahead and save this Keynote file so you have it later to use as a template. Just click File and then Save. Okay, well that wraps it up and I hope this video was helpful. If you have any questions, feel free to leave them in the comments below and I'll do my best to answer them. Also, please be sure to visit chickpreneur.com for more business and lifestyle for the chick in charge. Thanks so much for watching. See you soon.